Greetings, back again. These are some of my pens that I use for drawing and writing, and I like to use them for doing things, well, like this. I like making lots of these little fine lines and filling things in and doing a lot of detail work. It's one of the things that I enjoy doing with my pens, and for years I've been using these larger pens, but recently I've been going to these smaller sailor pens like this sailor compass here and these have been the pens that I've used most commonly in the past these are Jin Hao pens this is a 450 and then there's the 750 next to it but they are heavy pens these are heavy pens and these two pens I can't really use them because I've developed arthritis in my thumb now this is my Mont Blanc pen I've been using this pen since the um, early 80s and it is a very heavy pen. It's a piston filler. And these other pens, like this uh, Jin Hao 450, is also a very heavy pen. It's about the same size. And it has a very good nib on it, and I like the way it writes. But these pens are getting to be difficult for me to use because they hurt my hands. I've had this pen for a long time. It is a heavy pen. And years ago, when I was in college, I was using this pen which I actually bought in Britain, but it's a German-made pen, and it uh, was a great writer for me. It's very light and narrow, and it has a little window for the ink. It has a stainless steel nib. Unfortunately, I was using corrosive inks with this pen when I was writing music, and uh, I damaged the nib. But this pen, even though it sits on that tendon on my hand, it, it offers a lot, of, a lot of opportunity for me to hold the pen in different areas, and the weight didn't really aggravate that nerve, so I wanted to get away from these heavier Jin Hao pens, which rest right on that part of my hand. They balance right on the right on that tendon of, that runs to my thumb, which causes me a lot of issues. So the Jin Hao's they had to go away, and I got a pen that was narrower and much like that German pen, but it has a uh, it has a, a gold nib. However, this pen unfortunately is very heavy still and that's what led me to the pilot falcon pens i have two of these pens i have one in extra fine and i have a medium nib both are soft and this pen even though it sits on there it's very light because it is a resin pen but this pen has a different issue the grip section the section of the pen is a little wider and i would still get pain in my hand there was no really good place for me to hold and I discovered by using this Edison Collier that the grip section on this is very narrow and it would relieve some of that finger pain even though the pen was still resting on that part of my hand, which led me to decide to go for these sailor pens. This is my Sailor Pirate's Life, which I love this pen. It has a nice narrow body that tapers at the top and it has a narrow grip section which allows me to be able to get my fingers around it and support that thumb and hold it in a number of different grips while I draw so I don't have to put any pressure on those tendons. I tried getting the 21 carat nib for this pen but unfortunately this pen just a little bit wider and oddly enough just that little bit of width across that grip is just enough to cause hand fatigue over time but this is a great writing pen. I've love uh, that pen and uh, this pen is the pen that I've been using the most I bought this pen before I actually got that pen and this compass has been very successful it's a great shape I can use it in a lot of different angles and uh, I can feed it any ink I want because it's completely disassemblable and I can get fairly aggressive with cleaning it and that leads us to the pen that I bought today and that pen would be this pen this is a sailor and another sailor 1911 and you can see this is the medium medium nib on the sailor 1911 s now i like this pen this is a pg12 i don't know what that means i guess it's better than pg13 right uh and we will be unboxing this together but the first surprise when i unboxed this pen was the sleeve was on upside down typically the sailor name is faced with the box so i thought that was a little unusual but I do like these boxes. I find these nice Japanese minimalist boxes to be very nice. Now, I worked in a photo lab for many years, 
And one of the things I did was graphics and embossing. Now, I really like these boxes. They are a minimalist design, and a lot of people just throw them away. But I like these boxes. I think that they're very nice. The foiling on here is heat bonded, and the outer cover is really nicely done. There's no folding. There are no folds or seams. And the box is always very rigid, and it pops open with a nice positive click. And here's our first surprise. The pen is in backwards. Normally the nib is at the other end. And the foil is also open, or not the foil, but the vellum is also open. This is a medium nib on this 14 karat 1911 standard Fresca pen. And I do find it odd that the pen was in backwards. I don't know if someone was uh, new at their job at Sailor and didn't put my pen in properly or whether uh, perhaps some curious fingers at customs decided to take my pen apart, or perhaps it was just the distributor going through the pen, but the uh, cartridge converter is not in the pen. It must be sitting behind door number two. The bushing meets up right at the correct spot, and with a little bit of a twist, it closes down. Again, this is the 14 karat hard nib, and this nib and the trim on this pen are plated in rhodium, the rhodium is very nice, the plating is very good, the double rings. I don't know how many catalytic converters got stolen to be able to provide me with rhodium trim on my pen, but let's take a look behind door number two. And here's another surprise. Normally the uh, card, the, authentic, the, uh, the authentication card with the little hologram, is usually underneath the piston converter, and we also have the two... Uh, ink cartridges. These are proprietary to Sailor. The Sailor instruction booklet on how to use a fountain pen. If, fount if you're new to fountain pens and fountain pens are something that you don't know how to use yet, you can look at those instructions. And uh, we can put this stuff aside and, and uh, deal with it later. Now, the cartridge converter is in this nice little package, and the package is sealed at both ends, so no one went curiously looking through the through the package, we can see. And I'm going to slice it over the instructions so I don't cut through my mat, and we'll get this converter out. Now, I always like to make sure the converter works properly. These Sailor converters are nice because they're completely disassemblable, and that top metal part just unscrews. But this one has silicone grease on the outside, a very thin film, and that's not necessarily a good thing. It seems intuitive that you might want a little silicone grease on the, on the outside of the converter so it could slip over the nipple that is on the back of the section to allow the ink to flow from the converter to the feed. But the capillaries on the feed are so narrow, any amount of silicone grease can cause the ink to be rejected and not flow properly through the pen. So we're going to cap this up, and this is my Fresca pen. We'll put it here on the new rickshaw case with my Pirate's Life, along with the original 1911 that I got, my compass. And I'm going to clean this Fresca pen, and once it's rinsed out and cleaned up, we will then ink it up, and let's get to that in a minute. And we're back. Here we go, the pen is cleaned up, and I've put the other pens away. They're back in their sarcophagus to go back into their tomb. This is a Jinhao 200. It's a very nice pen. It was very comfortable, and it actually led me to the Sailor pens because they're about the same size. These two are both FPR pens from India, but the, but the, um, the Indian pens tended to blot, and unfortunately the Jinhao was just a, a bit of a hard starter. These are the pens that I definitely prefer. Of course, they're at a much higher price point. Carbon black ink, yes, I know. But uh, don't worry, we I will explain my purpose in this in just a moment. Now, the carbon black ink is a pigmented ink that has micro particles in it, and in order to make sure that it is properly blended, we like to I like to agitate the bottle to make sure that the bottle is thoroughly mixed. And uh, this bottle's almost empty, so I also have to make sure that the ink has traveled up into the little filler cup that is provided inside of the, of the bottle. Now, there's a bubble here, so I can't see how much ink is actually in there, and I'm going to pop it with the, with the nib of this pen. 
and we're going to uh, pop that off and see that uh, oh, not enough ink in there so we're going to put this pen back together and to avoid getting ink on my tweed here I think I shall move that away and just post this and we will close this up and try doing it again I'll just agitate this around and see if I can't get the ink to go into that filler cup that is inside of the platinum ink bottle and it's nice that these ink bottles come with that filler cup because when these start getting low it really is hard to get the ink out now I do have some other filling methods that I use but I uh, don't like to use them too often and we will post remember to always post your barrel before you let it go otherwise it'll roll off the table and I want to bring that plunger all the way down so that I can drop this in now every time I go to fill a brand new pen I don't expect to get a full fill you can see there's a large airspace here on this converter and I'll have to do it again the reason why is because the fins on the feed that are hidden by the nib section are dry now I did rinse this pen out so there is water in that feed and it will help wick some of the ink up but it always creates a bit of an airspace anyway and I like bringing the uh, plunger up to try to force the ink up into the fins because I, I like the way it bubbles and <laughs> kind of pools around but you've got to be careful because the bubbles will pop and spatter ink all around one of the interesting features of this plastic, the material that these converters are made out of, is that it tends to hold on to the ink onto the sides of the piston, and it makes it hard to see. You can see that it's kind of hard to see through this plastic, but we get a good fill on this. I, I noticed this pretty much only with the carbon black ink. My other inks don't tend to cling to the walls of the converter quite as much. Now I'm going to take a paper napkin and always cap your ink and I'm going to clean up this nib. This is something that I like about these uh, nib sections uh, of the Sailor pens also is that they have this large uh, threaded area where it's easy to hold on to the onto the uh, onto that section so I can clean this off enough to get the barrel on. Have to be careful while doing this because you don't want to jostle the cartridge around so it's always a good idea to get the barrel on so that you don't knock the cartridge around and and possibly open up that seal between the feed and the uh, opening of the cartridge now something that I noticed on this pen was that in the uh, plastic injection molding there's a uh, there's a seam here on the side and you there'll always be a seam on the threads but this one actually has a pretty visible seam on the section and uh, I don't know what happened with that because on my other pens it's not like that at all they're always polished out in fact on my uh, on my Pirate's Life pen it's not noticeable at all I guess maybe Sailor had someone new working at the company and I guess uh, <laughs> they hadn't uh, he also was the same person who must have packaged up my pen and put the box in upside down. We're going to do some writing samples and we're going to use this Claire Fontaine. This is a spiral bound or a wire bound notebook. And here is my my other pen. We can compare these two. The Sailor's Pirate Life, of course, is also a 1911 standard, so they are exactly the same pen. The only difference is the trim and the color. And you can see them side by side here. The gold trim looks great on the Pirate's Life. But they're the same size. The nib is a medium fine on the Pirate's Life. And, of course, the new Fresca pen is a medium. And, unfortunately, I did not make sure this pen was inked up before I went to use it. And this brings up the subject of capacity of these ink converters. So with these ink converters, they don't hold a lot of ink. In fact, it's easier, if you want more ink, you can use the uh, cartridges that come with the pen and get a syringe and refill them because these converters don't hold a lot of ink. 
But because of that, that's actually an advantage for me since I like to draw with these pens and I use the carbon black ink and sometimes even a diatrometer's document ink. Because I'm using this pigmented ink, this ink can cake up inside the veins or the fins of the feed. And because of that, I've actually had to clean, do some pretty rigorous cleaning on pens that I've let sit a little too long. You can see this pen is empty. And so I'm going to draw this up. Now, unlike the new pen, I don't have to prime that feed because this is already saturated with the ink that was in the pen from the last time I filled it. But because these pens don't hold a lot of ink, it means that I have to fill them more often, which also in turn gives me more opportunity to be able to clean and rinse out the pen. And because these pens are, are rather sensitive to any kind of any kind of debris that might build up with this carbon ink, the pigment can sometimes clump in the feed and then it will not allow the pen to, it won't allow the pen to uh, write. It'll inhibit the ink from flowing through that feed out to the end of the nib. And uh, when I clean this off, you can see that there's no, no mold line here. There's no seam on this, on this section. It's just nicely polished and there's no line on this one as opposed to the new pen and always post your barrel but uh, the carbon black ink and any other inks you should you should practice good good uh, cleaning habits with your fountain pens anyway but with smaller capacity cartridge it does lend lend an opportunity more for me to be able to have uh, the chance to go and rinse out the pen. I don't have as many excuses not to keep my pens clean. And so these are my my pens. We'll get that we'll get that paper back and we will try this again. Now I never have any trouble with these pens and hard starting. And so this one looks like a hard start, but it's actually me. I didn't line my nib up properly before I tried to write. Now, I have a Pilot 823, and it writes really well. It's buttery smooth, but it's so smooth that it actually uh, doesn't want to start on these kinds of coated papers like Rhodia or, or this Clairefontaine. It works on better, more aggressive paper, but it's not, a, it's, it's not as crisp a starter as the Sailor pens. I've never had any issues with starts with my Sailor pens. I have these three Sailor pens, now four, and you can see how accurately I can lay down these lines. This uh, medium fine tends to be a little dry with this carbon black ink, but this medium nib on the Fresca, it immediately starts to write nice and wet, and you can see it's got a good bold color and the line isn't overly juicy and so it works really well with this carbon black ink and it's just slightly smoother with this uh, carbon black ink than is the medium fine the medium just has a little less feedback i prefer the feedback i don't mind it some people don't like sailor nibs because they feel like they're too much like writing with a pencil but for me i i uh, i enjoy that that minimal amount of feedback that i get you can see that the line variation here is is uh, distinctive between the medium fine and the medium, but not hugely different. So it's kind of an, a nice variation on the line. And you can see that these hard nibs are very similar from the stroke from horizontal to, to uh, vertical. And the nibs are very consistent and flow very well for fast or slow. Now, some people, again, when they're writing, they don't like the fact that these pens don't hold a lot of ink. But I don't really do that much writing with them. Again, I tend to use these carbon blacks for doing my drawings. And so for me, the capacity isn't, isn't an issue. And if it is, you can use the, an empty cartridge and just syringe fill it, and you won't have that, that problem. Now, one of the things about drawing that I do like is the lack of line variation that I get with these Sailor Hard nibs. 
there's just enough variation that I can be happy with the with the variance in the contour. Sometimes I actually prefer to use my technical pens, my rotor and isograph pens, because they uh, they're they're really pinpoint accurate with where I place the line, and there's no variation. But I've discovered that I actually like using my Falcon soft nibs, and I also like these Sailor 1911s. These are a good fit for me. They're nice and light. The medium fine is just a bit more scratchy, but not really anything that much different than the medium, and they are really comfortable pens for my hand now that my hands are starting to get a little beat up from years of motorcycles and everything else I've done with them. So, I hope that you found this interesting and informative, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.